friends and fellow citizens. I am happy to be welcomed on my return to the capital of our Confederacy, the last hope, as I believe, for the perpetuation of that system of government which our forefathers founded, the asylum of the oppressed and the home of true representative liberty. Here, in the ancient Commonwealth of Virginia, the great principles of human government were proclaimed by your ancestors. Here, great battles for freedom have been fought, when the grand system they founded was attempted to be overturned by those who got possession of a government which they could not comprehend, and which, in six months, they see themselves wholly unable to administer. Anticipating the overthrow of that government which you had inherited, you assumed to yourselves the right, as your fathers had done before you, to declare yourselves independent, and nobly have you advocated the assertion which you have made. Here upon your soil, some of the fiercest battles of the revolution were fought, and upon your soil it closed by the surrender of Cornwallis. Here again are men of every state. Here they have congregated, linked in the defense of a most sacred cause. They have battled, they have bled upon your soil, and it is now consecrated by blood which cries for vengeance against the insensate foe of religion as well as of humanity of the altar as well as of the hearthstone. You have shown yourselves in no respect to be degenerate sons of your fathers. You have fought mighty battles, and your deeds of valor will live among the richest spoils of time's ample page. It is true you have a cause which binds you together more firmly than your fathers were. They fought to be free from the usurpations of the British crown, but they fought against a manly foe. You fight against the offscorings of the earth, men who were bound to you by the compact which their fathers and themselves had entered into to secure to you. The rights and principles not only guaranteed by the Declaration of Independence, but rights which Virginia wisely and plainly reserved in her recognition of the government in which she took a part, now come to you with their hands steeped in blood robbing the widow, destroying houses, seizing the gray-haired father, and incarcerating him in prison because he will not be a traitor to the principles of his fathers and the land that gave him birth. Recently, my friends, our cause has had the brightest sunshine to fall upon it, as well in the West as in the East. Our glorious Lee, the valued son, emulating the virtues of the heroic light horse Harry, his father, has achieved a victory at Fredericksburg and driven the enemy back from his last and greatest effort to get on to Richmond. But a few, however, did get on to Richmond. A few, I trust, may come from every battle to fulfill the pledge they made that they would come to Richmond, but they will come as captives, not as conquerors. In the West, too, at Murfreesboro, you have gained a victory over hosts vastly superior to our own in number. You have achieved a result there as important, as brilliant as that which occurred on the soil of Virginia, and contemporaneously at Vicksburg, where they were struggling to get possession of the great artery, the control of the Mississippi River to answer the demands of the Northwest. In every combat there, they have been beaten, and I trust they will be beaten in future. Out of this victory is to come that dissatisfaction in the Northwest, which will rive the power of that section, and thus we see in the future the dawn. First, separation of the Northwest from the Eastern states, the discord among them which will paralyze the power of both. Then for us, future peace and prosperity. Every crime which could characterize the course of demons has marked the course of the invader. The northern portion of Virginia has been ruthlessly desolated, the people not only deprived of the means of subsistence, but their household property destroyed, and every indignity which the base imagination of a merciless foe could suggest inflicted, without regard to age, sex, or condition. In like manner, their step has been marked in every portion of the Confederacy they have invaded. They have murdered prisoners of war. 
They have destroyed the means of subsistence of families. They have plundered the defenseless and exerted their most malignant ingenuity to bring to the deepest destitution those whose only offense is that their husbands and sons are fighting for their homes and their liberties. In one instance in the northwestern part of Mississippi, I have heard of them plundering the home of a poor widow, taking her only cow, and then offering her the oath of allegiance as the terms upon which they would furnish her rations. Worthy to be a matron of the Southern Confederacy, she refused it, and when I last heard of her, which was before the enemy was driven from her home, she was living upon parched corn. May God bless her. She is worthy to be a matron of the Southern Confederacy. Every crime conceivable, from the burning of defenseless towns to the stealing of our silver forks and spoons, has marked their career. In New Orleans, Butler has exerted himself to earn the execrations of the civilized world, and now returns with his dishonors thick upon him to receive the plaudits of the only people on earth who do not blush to think he wears the human form. He has stolen millions of dollars in New Orleans from private citizens, although the usages of war exempt private property from taxation by the enemy. It is in keeping, however, with the character of the people that seeks dominion over you, claim to be your masters, to try to reduce you to subjection. Give up to a brutal soldiery your towns to sack, your homes to pillage and incite servile insurrection. But in the latter point they have failed, save in this that they have heaped, if possible, a deeper disgrace upon themselves. They have come to disturb your social organizations on the plea that it is a military necessity. For what are they waging war? They say to preserve the Union. Can they preserve the Union by destroying the social existence of a portion of the South? Do they hope to reconstruct the Union by striking at everything which is dear to man? by showing themselves so utterly disgraced that if the question was proposed to you whether you would combine with hyenas or Yankees, I trust every Virginian would say, give me the hyenas. My friends, constant labor in the duties of office, borne down by care and with an anxiety which has left me scarcely a moment for repose, I have had but little opportunity for social intercourse among you. I thank you for this greeting and hope the time may come soon when you and I alike, relieved of the anxieties of the hour, may have more of social intercourse than has heretofore existed, and that I may come to participate in those quiet enjoyments that one cannot experience when his mind is constantly dwelling upon the struggles of his country. Whilst a man's sympathy is attracted by the sufferings of fellow creatures, Whilst every pulse of his heart beats in response to the trials, and every thought is directed to the dangers of his country, there is little time for the cultivation of the social enjoyments that pertain to a time of peace. I can only give this as my excuse for my seldom appearance among you. I can also say with entire sincerity that I have nothing to regret, coupled with all the sacrifices which this struggle for the independence of our confederacy has brought to me. I have borne my full share in the sacrifices of the people of whom I am a part, but I now feel if they had been greater, they would have served only to render me more devoted to you. War is an evil in every form in which it can be presented, but it has its palliating circumstances— this is a new government formed of independent states, each jealous of its own sovereignty. It is necessary that it should be tried in the severe irrucible in which we are being tested in order to cement us together. The enjoyments and comforts we have been compelled to renounce, the long months of deep anxiety each has felt, the unceasing labors that have tested our united energies, the sacrifices we have been subjected to in common, and the glory which encircles our brow has made us a band of brothers, and, I trust, we will be united forever. May God prosper our cause, and may we live to give to our children untarnished the rich inheritance which our fathers gave to us. Good night. 
If you enjoyed today's video and would like to see more content like this, be sure to take a shot at the like button, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest bird dog content. And if you'd like to support the channel, for a limited time there's exclusive Civil War Diaries merchandise available in the video link below.